What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes and I am a guest uploader here for the Net Ninja. And so I just wanna get it out of the way. Thank you so much to the Net Ninja for having me on the channel. In this video, we are gonna be building out this amazing Sveltkit and Supabase website called PokePage, which is pretty much like Linktree except for Pokemon. We have full Supabase authentication so we can go and log in a user. So I have a little test user right here, which we can just sign in. Once we sign in, we have this fully updated nav bar with our new session and we can press onto my page. So this is the page that's kind of like your Linktree page. It's linked to a user's specific email just to make the tutorial simple, and it has a bunch of different data that the user can choose. For example, a description and three different Pokemon. All this data is saved to Superbase DB, so this isn't just something that's sitting on the session. And if you're the user who owns the page, you're able to press the edit page here and make any changes you want to your page. For example, the description or your Pokemon. So I can make a little edit here and say, if you like the tutorial, feel free to check out my channel, Cooper Codes. So hopefully I impress you guys, but of course, subscribe to NetNinja. And I can even choose a different Pokemon, for example, Bulbasaur here. And then I can press save edits on the bottom. This is going to then save my edits to the Superbase DB backend. So if I hop over to a different session where I'm not the logged in user, you guys will see I'm able to see all the different data, but I'm not able to make any edits to it. And of course, at the end, I can always just press log out. All right, hopefully that gives a good overview of this project. Let's get into building it. We can get started by going into VS Code and opening an empty folder and then getting the terminal here. To create a Svelkit project, you can use the command npm create svelte at latest and then the name of the project. So I'm going to call it pokey-page. If it asks you to do yes to proceed, just say yes like this. I'm going to choose the skeleton project, which is just the bare bones new Svelkit app project. We are going to be using some TypeScript in this video using the TypeScript syntax. So press yes to TypeScript syntax. And just to make things simple, I'm not going to do any additional options just to make this easy for anyone new to Svelkit. So I can just press enter to continue there. Then we can CD into pokey-page. You guys will see in this created folder here, we have the entire kind of scaffold of the Svelkit project, which we are going to be talking about a bunch in this video. For user interface stuff, we are going to be using Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. Usually this will take some time to set up, but there's a really interesting command we can use to get Tailwind set up almost instantly. We can just do npx svelte dash add at latest tailwind css and then dash dash tailwind css dash daisy ui svelte add is a really interesting package which allows you to pretty much instantly add functionality that's popular for example tailwind to your svelkit application so now we can just press enter and it's going to do all the tailwind setup in the background which is pretty cool now that we have all the packages we can npm install just to make sure everything is installed locally and that is all we need to do for the initial Svelkit setup. Inside of Pokey page, so the outer folder here, we can make a .env.local. And so this is for your local environment variables. We are going to set up Supabase in a second, which is like a backend service. And so in order to communicate with Supabase, we need to create some environment variables. Those variables are going to be public underscore Supabase underscore URL is equal to and I'm just going to set these to empty strings for now because we're going to go generate them in a second. And then public underscore superbase underscore anon underscore key. Is this going to be an empty string for now? So now we can head over to superbase.com and get our superbase project set up. So on superbase.com, you're going to want to go to the top right and then log into your account. I'm already logged in, so it's going to show dashboard. But if you're not logged in, there'll just be a login button for you to use. And it should bring you to your dashboard in the end. So I'm going to press dashboard. So by default, you should be sent to this dashboard slash projects. And from here, we can press new project in the top left. You can then choose an organization. By default, you will have your own usernames org. So for example, Cooper Codes org, we can just press on that. The project name is going to be Pokey Page. Inside of Type a Strong Password, you can generate a password if you like. If you plan to use this project for a while, copy this password and save it somewhere. But for this video, we're not going to be using this database password at all. Then you can choose a region that is closest to you and then press create new project. While your project is setting up, you should have the anon public key right here and then the URL for your project right here. So I'm going to copy this key, paste it into 
the anon key right here. Then I'm going to copy the URL right here and bring it into our project over here. All right, so our project has now been created. And if you're on this page and you're confused where those variables are that I just copied over, you can scroll down and they're always gonna be right here. So let's do a very basic intro to Supabase. So Supabase is a backend as a service. So there's a lot of backend related things here that we are going to look at. On the left here, we can see all the different kind of categories Supabase offers. For example, there is a table editor to see all of your SQL tables. Right now we have zero, so we can create a table if we want, but we're not gonna do that yet. And so the second thing here is the SQL editor. This is really important because PostgreSQL is the main database behind Supabase. And so you're going to be communicating with your database using pure SQL. We'll talk about that more later though. There's also this database here, which shows you a bunch of different stuff relevant to your database. And then there's also authentication at the very bottom here. Authentication is how you manage users and things like that. And we're actually going to make some changes for this tutorial. So go over to authentication right here and go to providers. We can see by default, we have the email provider. And so you could think of it as email being one way we provide authentication for our website. I'm going to open up the email provider and disable confirm email and secure email change. The long story short behind why I do this is because by default, Supabase has an email server, which isn't really super consistent because it's just for development use. And people usually have problems with these emails even sending sometimes. And so you can still log in with an email. It just won't send you any emails. <laughs> And so once you've done these changes, make sure to press save on the bottom here. All right, so everything should look like this and we're good to go. There's also a URL configuration here, which is super important. So let's go and click this. By default, it's a localhost 3000, which is for React applications. SvelteKit uses localhost 5173. So make sure to put localhost 5173 for your site URL or else your authentication won't work. So we can press save. And then just to make sure we're all good in terms of redirects, we can do localhost 5173 slash and then star star, which means all the different routes coming from this localhost link. We can then press add URL. And so I know that was a lot of changes, but now we have a very basic Supabase project started that's able to be used with localhost 5173. So in the next video in this series, we are going to cover how to build the user interface using Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. So see you guys in there.